This business-centric monitor has got an absolute killer feature for productivity which I've actually never come across before and I'll be touching upon what it is further down in this video. Today we're looking at the Philips 34 BTU 3600C which sports a curved 34-inch ultra-wide VA panel with a resolution of 1440p and a refresh rate that goes up to 120Hz. You have got HDMI, DisplayPort and USB Type-C connectivity options with the latter delivering up to 90 watts of power built-in speakers and an Ethernet port, also known as RJ45. Better still, it's got a five-year warranty, which is the first for a Philips monitor, and has also got a TCO certified Generation 10, giving it good sustainability credentials. Now, in this video, which has been sponsored by the manufacturer, I'll be covering everything you need to know about it so you can make your own informed purchasing decision. So to kick things off, let's talk about its overall image quality. And here I would like to highlight that you've got a 1500R curvature, which adds to the overall immersion that you'll get, useful in certain scenarios. Although the downside is that at the extremities of the monitor, with certain text, you will see a little bit of a cutoff. Not a massive deal breaker, but just something I thought I should highlight. Elsewhere, you have got a resolution of 3440 by 1440p, and with the combination of a 34 inch form factor, it means you have got a pixel density of 110. Text looks really clear and sharp and had no issues whatsoever when it came to productivity. Now in terms of the overall color accuracy, you have got a dedicated sRGB mode that you might want to enable via the monitor's OSD. And here it's great to see that you've got full brightness controls. Now using my calibrators, I noticed a gamut coverage of 85.9% and a gamut volume of 86.4%. Below you can see how it compares to the standard. The average LTE sits at 2.29 and a maximum of 11.94. As a reminder, closer to zero is better. And as a result, you might want to get a calibrator in order to get the best sort of color performance from this monitor. In terms of the tested contrast ratio, it sat at a staggering 3020 to 1, therefore far surpassing any sort of IPS alternatives. The measured white point in comparison to the 6,504 Kelvin target sat at 5,933 Kelvin at 100%. As for its gamma curve, it's relatively close to the 2.2 standard. Now the monitor does also have a wider color gamut. For example, if you go on the 6,500 Kelvin preset via the monitor's OSD, you'll be able to notice that the gamma coverage and the gamma volumes have been positively affected across the color spaces. Here, concentrating on the Adobe RGB space, you can see below how it compares. The average delta E sits at 3.28 with a maximum of 16.56. Again, over here, you might want to get a calibrator if you're working in the Adobe RGB space. In terms of its tested contrast ratio, it doesn't change, and the measured white point slightly shifts to 5,991 at 100%. And as for its gamma curve, yet again, it's pretty close to the 2.2 standards. Now past color performance, when it comes to its overall brightness, it gets up to 323 nits, therefore meaning it can be used at roughly 70-80% to 80 brightness in a bright sunlit room or office. Equally over here, it's got good sort of range as it goes all the way down to 47 nits, making it quite dim. Useful for example if you're going to be using it in a pretty pitch black scenario. On that note, the monitor is also iSafe certified with blue light protection, because it actually meets the TUV Rhineland iSafe standards therefore giving you some extra peace of mind if you're going to be utilizing the monitor at night. In terms of the overall brightness uniformity, you'll be able to see how my panel performed across the board. Not exactly the best results, but of course this is somewhat panel lottery. In terms of the backlight bleed, this is actually quite good, given the fact it has got a VA panel, and therefore means that if you're going to be working or indeed using the monitor with a lot of dark scenes, then this will certainly be a pick over an IPS alternative. Moving swiftly on, we get onto one of the things that really does stand out for me, and that is when it comes to productivity. And of course, here I'm referring to the Smart KVM switch. Now, for those people who are not aware, KVM stands for Keyboard Video Mouse. In fact, I've got a dedicated video on this. You can check up on your proper banner or by following the links down in the description below. Effectively, this means that you can plug in your keyboard and mouse directly into a monitor, which has got a built-in KVM switch, such as this Philips monitor, and then allows you to switch between, let's say, a desktop computer and a laptop. In this instance, I had DisplayPort connected up to my computer and the USB Type-B to Type-A cable. Then I had a USB Type-C to Type-C cable, which is supplied within the box, to my portable laptop. Now this meant I could switch between the two sources. Now normally with a built-in KVM switch, you'll have to faff around with the buttons and therefore change the inputs. 
but in this instance you can simply triple tap the control button and switch between the two sources. That to me is an absolute game changer when it comes to productivity because it just makes things all that bit more simpler and even more seamless. So great thinking by the manufacturer. Now on the side, I would like to point out that the monitor has got something called multi-view, which effectively allows you to simultaneously view two different connections which are plugged into the monitor. For example, a laptop and a PC. This can be very handy if you're doing some complex multitasking. Speaking of which, this brings me on to connectivity, and here you've got four USB Type-A ports, one of which will deliver fast charging capabilities, handy for example for a smartphone. Then you have got a USB Type-C port, which delivers up to 90 watts of power, handy if you want to simultaneously charge and use your laptop. Then you've got an HDMI 2.0 port and a DisplayPort 1.4 input. The former will give you 1440p at 100Hz, with the latter going up to 120Hz. The extra bit of fluidity is certainly appreciated, especially if you compare it to some other monitors out there that go up to 60 or 75Hz. Sure enough, it's not a gaming-centric monitor, but even when it comes to desktop or productivity, that extra bit of fluidity, in my books, is very much great to see. Elsewhere, you have got a 3.5mm jack output, which can be handy for plugging in your headphones directly into the monitor. Or, of course, you have got those two 5 watt speakers. Not only are they handy for video conferencing, but they can be useful, for example, for basic notifications or music listening. Now, apart from all of that, I would also like to highlight that you have got a very comprehensively laid out OSD. This can be accessed via the small physical buttons that are positioned at the bottom right hand side of the monitor. And yes, they're actually very easy to initiate. The monitor's OSD itself is very intuitively laid out and provides you all the key options. Better still, you've got an extension to this with the Philips Smart Control software, further giving you customization and indeed controls of the monitor. Now to conclude, I would like to point out that you have got a three side boards design and therefore this 34 inch ultra wide monitor doesn't take as much space on your desk as you might expect. Then you've also got a very sturdy and ergonomic base, which provides you height, tilt and swivel adjustments. If however you want pivot adjustments for any given reason on an ultra wide monitor, then you might want to replace the stand. Here, you have got Visa compatibility, allowing you to place it on a monitor arm or indeed a multi-monitor setup. So there we have it. Hopefully you've enjoyed my detailed overview of the Philips 34 BTU 3600C. I'll be curious to know what you make of it down in the comment section below and if you would use that smart KVM feature. If you have enjoyed this detailed video, definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing and hitting that bell notification. All of which would be greatly appreciated. As such, I've been totally dubbed and I hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.